Hi guys, got a bit of an interesting one for you today. Um, I came out to this car oh, a couple of months ago now because uh, getting an intermittent engine management light, which when I plugged it, uh, which led to loss of power. Uh, and then re turning the, the car off, starting it again, I think it was fine. Uh, so I had a look at the throttle body because um, that was a fault code that came up and it you know, gave it a proper reset. So I'll go through that shortly. Um, and everything seemed okay, come back to it because the light keeps coming back on. But if we put the ignition on... Oh. You can hear that it's attempting to do its alignment procedure, but that is far too noisy for what it's supposed to be doing. Um, it'd normally do a few clicks and that's it, but yeah. That's just really wrong. Now, what the error I was getting before was that it measures percent open and percent closed at all times. Obviously, they should both add up to 100%, uh, and they weren't. There was an error in that. So, obviously, something inside that controller uh, for the throttle body is knackered. Uh, so, I've got a second hand one with me. We're going to swap that over, and then obviously, we're going to need to uh, reset that and set that up uh, for the ECU uh, so it can do all its alignment. So, I'm going to do all that now. Okay, so I've got my new throttle body here. Now, this part is the same across the 225 and the 180. I've got my new gasket, which is going to go here. So I've got to undo this clip here. On the 225, obviously this is all over here, and this is a, a spring clip. Um, this is one of those one-use clips, but you can just about get away with reusing them if you're very careful the way you undo them like that. Yeah, I've just opened it out. And I'll be able to re clamp that when it's done. So that'll come off there. And then I've got four bolts around it. There's one under there, and then there's obviously a plug going up to the bottom of it there. Uh, so once I've one, done all of those, uh, I'll be able to just clean the surfaces up and get the new one on. Uh, so I'm going to start that now. Gentle persuasion. There we go. Let's With hoses like this, I don't know whether you notice me then, I just give it a twist just to break the, the seal and then they come off nice and easily. Um, same for the coolant lines onto the bottle and things like that, you know, just give them a little twist and they free off. Uh, so just attack these ones here. One-handed, never easy. Fast forward through this process so you don't get too bored. Okay, so I've got all four bolts out, um, so I just need to pull it off like that, and I can get to the connector here, oh, I'll lose one handed again, so with these clips it's all best to push them on, pull the bit back and then you can pull them off like that. So this is a broken Feels, feels. No, there's a bit of as I push on the back there. Um, yeah, sounds a bit noisy inside here. Uh, later for academic purposes, I might open this up and have a quick look. Uh, but as it's starting to precipitate slightly, the weather's not looking the best. I want to get this new part on as quick as I can. Um, so you have to check this face here and luckily look, there's not much gasket material stuck itself on here. It stayed connected to the 
throttle body in this case. Um, you want to clean this surface up, clean this one up, and we'll get the new gasket in and get it put back together. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna close the bonnet for two minutes and see what this rain's doing. To be honest with you, the joys of being a mobile mechanic. Tip for doing this, which I just tried to film one-handed, but it is impossible. So I get the first corner in first, push the gasket round, get this second one in loosely. So now that those are both in, just loosely, just with my fingers, I'll be able to get the others in. Which this bottom one here is the most tricky one, but I'll just put it on an extension so I can sort of get at it from further away rather than trying to get my fingers all the way around the bottom corner because that's where it is. All right, so I'm going to do that now. Okay, so I'm going to turn the key with the new one connected up. And as you can hear, it's not doing anything. It did a, a tiny click when I first turned it on that I could hear. And that is it, so it's a lot healthier. So I'm going to give it a start. Okay, so I need to align that, it's a bit off. Okay, ignition's on. Gonna go into control module. Go to engine. Now have a look at the fault codes. Implausible signal, that's what we were getting before. 187 and 188 are implausible intermittent against each other, okay? So, I'm going to clear those codes before I go into the next bit. And go back. We go to basic settings. And we go into group 60. And you can see here, it's running the adaption. You can see those values changing on the left there. Saying the adaption is now okay. So, all we've got to do, basic maths, make sure that these two match up with each other. Uh, Keep moving about at the minute, but if that was 14.1, if that is 85.9, then we can obviously see that, that adds up to 100%. Uh, but it's saying that it's okay, so I'm just going to leave it for the 20 seconds or so to see if it settles down. Uh, you can see there, just a ever so I mean, before the value differences were, were massive, uh, now we're only missing 0.4%. <laughs> So that hopefully won't actually cause any issues. Uh, get done back. Next control. Exit out of there. Right, let's have a start up. And that's idling a lot more normal now. It's obviously doing its fast idle to warm up and then it's going to drop to its cold idle. But obviously you saw the first time I started it up it was it was all the way up here and then it would slowly drop to here and then it was really noisy and you know juddery and yeah not liking it at all but now that is sweet that's its normal behavior i mean it's it's uh it's in its cold start sequence at the minute and i'm not going to let this get too hot because i've actually got to service this car next uh but yeah i'm happy that that is doing what it should do so yeah that's uh if you've got throttle body issues give it a reset if that doesn't fix it and your throttle body's you know messed up then yeah fit a new one and do what i've done happy days see you next time i do just want to add um this has got a tiny bit of build up uh but this is really insignificant compared to i mean even this side yeah okay it doesn't look pretty but there's not that much actual gunk in there um at all not enough to be causing the issues and the problem is when you try and clean these it's when you get uh, the cleaning solution goes through and into these potential geometers that's where you get the issue so this may well have been cleaned previously uh, and have you know sort of damaged that um, but I in this instance don't think that cleaning would have made a difference if this was really coked up then yeah I would have cleaned it first to give it a try um, but thing of being on the road and having already come out to this once before want to make sure that this solution is right the first time round. Um, for me, you know, the the parts and labour for cleaning all this up versus the cost of charging a tenner for a new throttle body that I had sat on the shelf, um, 
it, you know, you've got to weigh those things up. So I just wanted to add that in there. Yes, if it's really badly cooked up, then give it a clean and see if that fixes it. But if you still get any issues, don't be surprised uh, if you've got to just swap the throttle body. Uh, and that is me for the day. See you later.